Do you want a faster website? In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks that you can use to speed up your own site, to kill it online, to step out of your frame, to make your mom love you again, to reconnect with old family members, with new lovers. In this video, we're gonna show you all that and more. So we use three tools to ensure website speed. We use Google PageSpeed Insights, we use GT Metrics, and we use Pingdom Tools. And each one of these gives us a different perspective on how our websites behave and how fast they are for the end user. So for example, Google PageSpeed tests your mobile site on 3G speeds because Google assumes if you have a fast site on a 3G you know, network, on a 4G network, it'll be great. And on a 5G network, it, it would be insane. And Google is in the business of serving the best experience for its users. So it wants you to have a fast mobile site. With GT Metrics, this gives you tons of data on how to optimize, tons of ideas. For instance, the Optimize Images tab here. This is for CMC Sheet Metal. Um, the web, this is our, uh, one of our clients. Uh, it will show us, here's all the images that we use on that page, and it, a, a link to download an optimized version. So this top one right here is for our banner image of this beautiful ductwork, and it uh, reduced it by 4%. And right here, if I right click this optimized version, it shows, here it is, 4% smaller. Uh, it was already uh, an optimized image, obviously, but uh, you know, if you, if you just took this off of a phone or if you download an image online, there could be tons of room, up to 80% optimization. And, and that kind of adds up, uh, you know, you have multiple images on a site, it adds up to be a lot of speed. And then for Pingdom, uh, I like using this because you can test different regions, um, you know, all over the world and get a better idea of the user experience. So number one, before you even build your website, you need to get a secure socket layer certificate, otherwise known as an SSL. And I'm sure you've seen this before at the top of most browsers should have a lock icon up here if you have an SSL certificate. And this is a signal to Google that your website is secure, it's free of spam and malware. And that's what Google wants to hear. They want to make sure their users have a fast experience and a secure experience. And that's just another trust signal to Google that says you're trustworthy. So website, web page size. So the first thing you have to do is decide what content matters. Every time you add something to a site, whether it be a picture, a video, text, a form, it delays load speed. So make sure everything on the page has a motivation to be there and is not, there is no clutter because every little thing adds up to damage your uh, Google page speed insight score. So if it's on your site, make sure it's supposed to be there and make sure it's what you want because it can really, you know, elements just bog down your website. Um, this is what I believe is to remove all JavaScript. JavaScript can be so cool, but especially on mobile, it just takes too long to render. It clutters up your page and makes things just slow. Um, to combat loading of images, we use what's called Ajax loading. That's asynchronous loading. So for instance, on CMC Sheet Metal, the top portion would load, the part that you can see would load first, and underneath this would all load in the background so by the time the first top part loads in and you scroll down it's already loaded and this gives the illusion that your website is instant you know is super fast and that's exactly what we want um and i also advise you guys to avoid adobe typekit fonts these take forever to load because every time your website's trying to load a font it has to talk to Adobe and that can take forever. Depending on where your user is, it can take a considerable amount of time. So I say just avoid them altogether. Uh, in that same kind of vein, use your own custom YouTube images. So if we scroll down here, we, we built this on Squarespace. So this image or this video right here is our own image that we made. We uploaded it to Squarespace ourselves. If we just had a link to the YouTube video, every time this page would load, the website would have to talk to YouTube and, and download that image and put it in front of you. It's just another step that slows your website down and it can be completely eliminated. Uh, on the vein of images, 
the most speed improvements you can find are in images because JPEG is a terrible format that is very, very uh, unoptimized. So uh, number one is sizing. This image is very small. It's probably 400 pixels by 300 pixels, and it doesn't need to be any bigger. It's not a big picture. It doesn't need to be 2,500 by 1,500 to make sure it has the highest fidelity. Uh, this is going to be on a website or a phone even, even smaller. Um, it's just not going to be noticed, and it's room for optimization. Um, we use progressive JPEGs as opposed to regular JPEGs, and I found a little image that kind of demonstrates why. A typical JPEG image loads like this. So it loads like a cruddy version, an okay version, and then a, you know, the best version of it. Progressive JPEG loads the full res image first, but top down. And that happens so fast that it seems like the image loads automatically, but it's actually much faster. I would recommend you use, you know, all your images should be progressive JPEGs, unless there needs to be a transparency layer like in a logo, then you can use a PNG. Um, that's, it's up to, you know, it's, it's up to what your needs are. Uh, and, and when we do use PNGs, we use a website called tiny PNG. You just upload it into this, onto the site and it'll actually remove all the unused data and give you back an optimized version. Very similar to GT metrics. Um, but just a little bit, you can load more images in here much faster. So we love to use it. Um, CSS. So your CSS is for a um, customized style sheet. And it's sort of the directions for a browser to tell the elements what they look like. Color, padding, um, you know, what the background is. All that kind of stuff is put into this put into your CSS. So what we do is we define our, our elements that are used the most. So that's, you know, font color, <clears throat> drop shadow, uh, for instance, here we go. These are, these are, but what I mean by drop shadow is, you know, these buttons have it right here. This image has, has it. Um, also the, the background color, the font colors, you know, all this, all this stuff is defined at the top of the page because as you grow your website and you have multiple pages, you're going to reuse the same elements. So this actually, you just define it once and every time you use it after that, it costs no real, uh, no overhead for your browser. It's already defined. If you use it again, no problem. If you use it 20 times, no problem because it's already been defined once. So that was, that's a nice optimization. Um, in that same vein, we alphabetize everything. Uh, your browser, whether on mobile or desktop, will optimize to make everything alphabetical. So for instance here, uh, FLMT, right? Alphabetical order. If those were not in that order, a browser would take the time to put them in order before it processes it. So we remove that step, makes things load much faster. Not a crazy amount. Uh, none of these will make your website load you know, five seconds faster, but this is just best practices. So you can have the fastest website, um, no matter how big it grows, because, you know, websites grow and content grows and we're just trying to keep things manageable. Um, same thing with the, the optimized definitions, um, on mobile right here, for instance, this is a font size on mobile for body text defined once you don't want to define margin and padding and color every single time you want to define body text just do it once and then every time it comes up it will load much faster uh, moving on um to, for CSS for design. So, uh, you know, we all like images and video and GIFs and love colors, but that takes time. Every image, everything on your website takes time. So you can actually do more with just color, font, and um, typography. So for instance, this no, CMC sheet metal, we have one image here in the background. We have one image here for the video. 
and we have one image behind these reviews right here. That's it. Everything else is done with color. It's done with, um, you know, typography. And we do this because we could use images, we could use PNGs for some of these elements, but they would just take time. It would just slow your website down. Uh, another example is on our, our website, on astromarketing.com. In our blog section, the H1 up here is actually animated. So if you look like slowly, this is sort of fading. And that costs next to nothing to do compared to these images down here. This takes up way more time. Having even as, as small as these as these are, takes up more time to load than it does to have this sort of cool animation that's attractive to the eye. Um, On to mobile page speed. So you want to do more with less. Like I said, Google is taking mobile page speed or counting it more importantly. Soon it will be the most important thing about your website is its mobile page speed. Um, and so doing more with less is more important than ever. Uh, if, if you're ever curious what your, your, what a website looks like on mobile with actually, without having to actually look it up on mobile, you go to a website and you right click it, go to inspect. This is for, for Chrome. This brings up the inspector and you press this little toggle device toolbar and it shows you your mobile view. So this is what the website looks like on mobile. And like I said, do less with more. Just three images spaced out. We use typography to make things kind of look interesting. And that's it. it. Loads up fast and quick. You don't have, you know, tons of, of images or video or GIFs that get in the way and slow it down. You just want it to be as optimized as possible. Um, a, a way we did that is we uh, redefined our media callouts, um, our media queries. So... Typically on, in CSS, if you want to reference something on mobile, you use this whole string of characters. And what this does is tells it tells the your device, your mobile phone, hey, when you run into this website, this is a list of things I want you to do to make it look good on a mobile screen. And they all start like this, at media only screen and, and then you define the, the width. So here is 600 pixels, so a mobile screen. That's 41 characters. You repeat that 300 times or whatever on a website and that adds up. What we did is we defined media, or I'm sorry, mobile, right here at mobile and then we defined it as a certain size. So every time we have to reference mobile, it just looks like this, at media, at mobile. That's it. Same thing as this right here, but a quarter of the characters. And over the life of a website, as you add more pages, that really adds up. Um, great optimization technique. It's just best practice. Uh, another small one that I've seen is the display none. So in CSS, you can have things not be displayed um, by just using you know display none. On mobile, it actually just doesn't display it on the screen. So you think you're hiding something from mobile by using display none, but actually what you're doing is you're loading it and then just deciding for it not to load on the screen. So if it was a video, it would actually load in the background. You wouldn't be able to click it or see it on your mobile site, but it's still there and it's still clogging up all your speed. If you uh, like this video, please hit subscribe, ring the bells, really helps us here at Astro Marketing. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.